Hello everybody. Welcome to the class. This is Sahiti, teaching assistant from Polytechnic of Agriculture Engineering, Kalikiri. In the previous class, we have discussed about the complete step-by-step -step process of molding procedure. So in today's class, we will be discussing on different types of molding processes. So let's get started. The molding processes in common use may be classified according to different norms. So their first one is according to the methods used in making the mold. They are classified as the following ones. So there are different types of methods to make a mold. So let's see what are the different types of methods we use. The most commonly used one is bench molding and floor molding. The next one is pit molding and the last one is machine molding. And these are the most commonly used methods to make any kind of mold of any particular size. So now let us know in detail about these methods. The mold itself acts as the or the floor itself acts as the drag part and core portion may be rammed in a flask and inverted on the drag or in this may be covered with the cope or the mold may be cast open. So now in bench molding both green and dry sand molds can be made by using this type of molding process. And also the molder makes the mold while standing or in the position of standing. Molds both for ferrous and non-ferrous castings are made on bench molds. So when it comes to floor molding, Medium and large size castings are made by this and also both green and dry sand molds can be made using this floor molding tool. Next comes the machine molding. The last one is machine molding. So generally in bench, floor and pit molding, the different molding operations are carried out manually by the hands of the molder whereas in machine molding various molding operations like sand ramming, rolling the mold over, withdrawing the pattern etc are done by machines. So the molding which is done by the help of a machine is called machine molding. This is because the molding machines perform the number of operations which the molder does by hand. Machines perform these operations much faster and more efficiently and in a much better way. Molding machines produce identical and consistent castings and also they produce castings of better quality and at lower cost. So this is the reason most commonly machine molding is used for heavy and extremely large castings. So here we have discussed about different types of molds according to the methods used in making it. Now we will see according to the type of material of which the mold is made and they are classified as first one green sand molding, dry sand molding, skin dried sand molding, loam molding, cement bonded molding, carbon dioxide molding, shell molding and the last one is ceramic molding. So in this class we will be discussing about the first four 
topics which is green sand molding dry sand molding skin dried and low molding here we can see three types of sands which is the first one is green sand and the second one dry sand and the last one is loam sand so first one is green sand molding the word green signifies that the molten sand is in the moist state at the time of metal pouring so the main ingredients of green sand are silica sand clay and moisture moisture is nothing but water also any additives may be added in small amounts to obtain the desired properties of mold or casting nearly 60% of the total casting are prepared from green sand molds itself so in this method the molten metal may be poured immediately after the mold is completed that is the mold is in moist state at the time of metal pouring you can see at the time of molten metal which is being poured into the casting or the flask the mold is in its moist state and it is at the time of metal pouring these type of sand molds are used for casting nearly all types of ferrous and non ferrous metals in small and medium sizes so any kind of sizes that is from small and medium size or uh, metals um, or castings that can be done with the help of ferrous and non ferrous metals so this is about green sand molding now let us see the advantages and disadvantages of green sand molding so this is least expensive method to construct the mold so if this is cheap in construction and also involves less time to prepare the castings and also the dimensional accuracy is good across the parting line now disadvantages of green sand molds due to its moist condition because of the moist state mold is weaker and is likely to be damaged in handling while casting to handle this kind of molds is difficult or there might be some kind of damages due to its moisture content it may cause serious defects in castings and also these type of castings or molds cannot be stored for longer period due to its moisture content in it so these are the advantages and disadvantages of green sand molds now comes the dry sand molding the word dry signifies that the mold is dry or free from moisture content at the time of metal pouring the absence of moisture makes the dry sand molds to overcome most of the disadvantages that we have seen in the green sand molds a dry sand mold is prepared in the same manner as that of green sand mold that is by mixing silica sand clay and also water so we can see the mold is prepared with specially processed sand and is then dried in an oven the entire mold or core is dried or baked in ovens to overcome the moisture present in this sand so baking is done so that it hardens the binder thereby increasing the strength of the molds or cores the temperature and duration of baking ranges from 
200 to 300 or if it is for the maximum 450 degrees Fahrenheit or centigrade and from a few minutes to hours respectively depending on the type of metal being poured and also the size of casting. The sand mixture for molding also may consist of molding sand, burnt facing sand, clay, cinders and also moisture as we already discussed. So it consists of silica sand, clay sand, cinders which is nothing but boiler ash commonly called as boiler ash and also moisture. Moisture is nothing but water. After the mold is prepared, its surface is sprayed with molasses water. Once the molding is done or the mold is prepared, its surface that is the base of the mold is sprayed with the molasses water. And then it is dried in an oven for 200 to 300 degrees centigrade until the moisture is completely eliminated from it. These molds can be held for any length of time before pouring provided they are kept dry. Now we will discuss the some of the advantages and disadvantages of dry sand molding. So what are the advantages? The stronger and offer resistance of the mold against metal penetration. So since they are stronger after drying because the hardness of the sand increases after baking they become stronger and they offer resistance of mold. So the mold which we have taken is more resistant after baking of the sand against the metal penetration. Defects caused by the presence of moisture are avoided. 
so since in the grains and molding due to the moisture content there might be any damages or defects to the molding process so when it comes to dry sand molding due to the hardness increased or after the dry sand or the sand is dried at certain temperature it get hard it gets hardened or thicker so due to this the defects that could be caused might be avoided so molds can be easily handled due to the sand which is dried we are using the sand which is dried so also smoother castings are produced and no chill areas form on the surface of the castings and also finally overall dimensional accuracy of the mold is much better when compared to the grain sand molds so now we will see the disadvantages of dry sand molds due to their greater strength castings may crack or hide dangerous stresses since the sand is baked or it is dried at certain temperature to increase the hardness so it gets greater in strength or develops its strength after baking so due to this the castings which we are taking may get cracks on it or hide some of the dangerous stresses inside the molds and the next one is extra equipment time and labor are needed to make a dry sand mold so extra equipment is nothing but if you can see we have seen in the previous video we have used some testers and also the ovens so to transfer the sand from one place to another and also transfer it from pit to or the machine to the oven it takes some kind of time and labor and also equipment which leads to more consume in the time and the molding materials are also costlier so these molding materials oven and the testers and also they include some kind of equipments which lead to high in cost and also distortion is greater because of the baking so finally dry sand molds are often used for large castings of cast iron and steel such as engine cylinders engine blocks etc so whereas in green sand molds in spite of the drawbacks that it has it is most popular of all molding methods and accounts for more than 90% of sand molded castings so this next is one is dry sand skin dried molding. sand molding so skin dried mold is an intermediate state between dry sand and green sand mold because the surface layer of such a mold may be dried to a certain depth of about 25 mm or more with the help of a gas torches or heaters and green sand baking is provided to the dried faces of the mold so we can see dry skin dry mold or skin dried sand molding is nothing but the sand which is intermediate between dry sand and green sand that is nothing but it is not having it is not so moist and not too dry so it is the intermediate between green and dry that is nothing but moisture and dry so that is nothing but skin dried sand it is because the surface layer that, that that is nothing but the base of this kind of sand or such kind of mold may be dried to a certain depth so it is after taking it into the molds it may be dried to a certain depth of 25 mm or more so it might be taken for about 25 mm or more with the help of gas torches or heaters so with the help of the heaters these type of sands are heated to a depth of 25 mm or more so sands used for making skin dried molds contain certain binders like 
linseed oil which harden when heated so once when the sand is heated they get harden due to the certain binders binders like linseed oil which is present in it they get hardened so unlike dry mold a skin dry mold is dried only up to a depth of varying from 6 mm to 25 mm so this this is from 6 mm to 25 mm a skin dried mold possesses strength and other characteristics in between green and dry sand molds if a skin dried mold is not poured immediately after drying if the mold is not poured as soon as after drying the sand moisture from green baking sand may penetrate the dried skin and make some make the same ineffective so now we can see skin dried molding is used for casting mostly ferrous and all the non ferrous alloys in the shape of comparatively larger larger means heavier castings it has the advantage of both green sand and dry sand molding to a certain extent since the time required for drying is less than in case of dry sand so we have already seen this is intermediate between green and dry so the heating time or the time required for drying this kind of sand is less when compared to the dry sand so that is the reason this method is less expensive when compared to the dry sand molding so skin dried molding is already used for ferrous and non ferrous alloys so this is about skin dried sand molding so now we can see this is the process of skin dry sand molding and So this is the pattern and this is the flask we'll insert this pattern inside the flask and fill it with the sand you can see here pattern this placed over flask is placed over the pattern and filled with the sand and now we'll turn it to its upside down position and once the pattern is removed it is dried with the help of this after the mold is prepared it is partially dried around the cavity to a depth of about 22 mm we have seen it might be up to 25 mm so once it is dried so now comes the last one this is the hardness of molding round the mold cavity the mold so around this mold cavity, cavity sand, the hardness of mixture of sand increases clay or hardens the sand a mixture of sand and clay, clay are called temperature so this mold. is the dry sand also mold. contains fire clay and gangsters loam sand contains many ingredients like fine sand particles finely ground refractories clay graphite and fiber reinforcements in many cases the clay content may be so we can see the clay content may be of the order of 50% so clay may be taken of 50% or more in most of the cases so the loam sand molds are first constructed with porous bricks or large iron parts so we also we also have seen in the pit molding so they are big brick structured or brick layered inside so in this loam molding also 
the inner side of the brick structures forms the drug contour of the casting once the castings are prepared the inner side of the bricks or the brick structure forms the rough contour rough contour of the castings so when this loam sand is mixed with water the materials mix to a consistency resembling mortar and become hard once it is dried or after drying so it is it just becomes hard after drying and big molds for castings are made of big framework lined with this kind of loam sand and then dried as i already told you this big structures forms the rough contours so these parts are then plastered which are rough roughly plastered with these are plastered with a thick loam sand mixture consisting of silica sand clay coke and also water that is nothing but moisture it is then swept by a stripper to get the required shape so to get the required shape or particular shape of uh, the sand or after once it is thick layered so it is layered with a thicker loam sand mixtures it is then swept with the help of a strickles eliminating the need for regular patterns so if it is of irregular patterns if we take any regular patterns that are uh, normally which are not used or regularly used patterns so we will use this kind of process the shape of the mold is also obtained by either with sweep or skeleton patterns we have also discussed about uh, different types of patterns and uh, from those patterns when it comes to the loam molding we use either sweep or skeleton patterns so sweeps etc are used for making big castings like big bells by using this kind of loam sands so this method of molding is used for large castings where regular molding method in flasks like we would be too expensive and inconvenient to build in the flasks since much time and more time is required to make this kind of loam molds they are not extensively used so we have discussed the first four process so far and the next four we will discuss in the next class thank you